It was the late 1700s. The Revolutionary War had ended, our fledgling country had just elected its first president, and in 1791, David Vance and William Davidson presented to the North Carolina House of Commons a petition to form Buncombe County. The Buncombe Bill was ratified in 1792, and shortly thereafter, our county government was formed. Organizing that first government was an immense challenge. As part of one of the original 13 colonies and in the mountains far from the coast, Buncombe was settled by pioneers and immigrants who worked together to create communities and eventually make Buncombe the hub of the western region. Economic prosperity came with the completion of the Buncombe Turnpike in 1827, and in 1851, Buncombe's 660 square miles held a population of about a thousand people. With the coming of the railroad, our population grew quickly. From Buncombe's earliest days, our elected leaders have faced challenges of governing to bring about some pretty incredible achievements. As we face more growth, we want to take a look at one of the most successful segments of our county's history through the unique perspective of those that governed during some of the very turbulent yet productive years. Let's take a few minutes to hear from some of the men and women who spent a good part of their lives wrestling with and making the decisions that over the last three decades have built the thriving community we enjoy today. By the late 1980s, Buncombe's population had grown to 171,000, and our elected leaders were facing the demands of that growth. You'll hear them say it was not easy, and that perhaps balancing the needs of the community as a whole with the wants of individuals was often the most difficult part of the job. Let's begin with Dr. Gene Rainey. We found a memo he wrote to his fellow board members just after he was elected chairman in 1989 summarizing what he felt the board would need to achieve in the next few years. Here's the list. Set up a county manager form of government. Check. Site a landfill. Check. Build a new animal shelter. Check. Build a new jail and court complex. Check. Implement a zoning plan. Check. Little did he know that checking off those goals would take more than 30 years. And so in 1988, I, I told him, yes, I'll run, and I'll run against a, very, a guy who became a very good friend, Kurt Ratcliffe, who had defeated every good Democrat uh, in the world for uh, 16 years. He was reelected four times. Phenomenal. A very good guy. So I ran against him, and, and the good Lord saw the fit to bring me back in, and I was elected in 1988. We had a lot of problems then. The main accomplishment of the Board of Commissioners at the time was to put a, a uh, system of county manager into Buncombe. There are 100 counties in North Carolina. Buncombe is the seventh largest county in the state, but it's one of the few counties at that time, only four or five that did not have a county manager. Most of those counties were in the West here. In 1988, we went to a county manager form of government where we brought in a, an outside person to fill that position. And of course, the first one, as everyone knows, was Steve Medcalf, uh, who did an excellent, excellent job. But it put us in a whole different form of government and uh, something that was very beneficial to the uh, to the county. We had, had lobbied for an election to see if the people wanted it. The present commissioners back then when they first, when it got that, that serious of consideration. And, and we had lobbied for a, an option for the people to, to vote for. And we thought it would, would pass because we all, all five of us supported it. And uh, then the state came over and said, yeah, you will, you're going to have one. <laughs> so the county until just a few years before I was elected, never had a, a professional county manager. So we had our first one. He was still there. Steve Metcalf was there when I first became commissioner. 
he left and, and went and did something else. The, the board had been three members, it was now five. So it was a time of great change uh, and professionalizing the government. Of course, the, the smartest thing we did was hire a, 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 a go to the county manager, form of government, and, and then fortunately left to find Wanda Green. To, she, this lady is the smartest lady as I've ever run across. She's something else. She's good. Uh, Wanda has been on the cutting edge of so many things. She's been a really good leader. I was fortunate to be on the board when we hired her. I'm proud that we hired her. I think she's been a wonderful leader for Buncombe County. While well, we were getting accustomed to our new form of government, downtown Asheville was in the middle of its own revitalization. Bringing business back to downtown area would spur growth for the whole county. If you think of Buncombe County today, you think it's progressive, you think it's industrial because we're the epicenter of medicine and housing and um, business for Western North Carolina. But then it seemed very different. So downtown was totally boarded up. Downtown Asheville, if you think about that, totally boarded up. Uh, Roger McGuire came to our board early on and said, I've got this vision of what's going to help downtown and we're going to fund Pack Place and we need the county to help us fund it. And you know that was a lot of conversations and a lot of people went, nah, you know, is this going to really do anything? Well, obviously, uh, looking back, it's done a lot because as soon as that opened, Cafe on the Square opened up as a new restaurant across the street and it exploded. But the Fine Arts Theater was an X-rated movie theater when I first became a county commissioner. And the county itself was very farming, agriculture oriented at that point. And it's certainly changed a lot since that point. Well, it was much smaller. It's a much larger today. And I think more business like today than it was. I would describe Buncombe County as really coming into its own around understanding that it was a county that was uh, rural and urban. And it was really going through those you know, growing pains of transition. What really is nearly, and it's not a transition, it's, it's a simultaneous identity, really. So I think for a long time, uh, Buckham County understood itself in, in a more of a rural nature, and that's what we love about it, too. We love the beauty and the farmland, but we were also emerging as this kind of you know, internationally known city. So trying to uh, marry those two together, we adopted land use planning and tried to uh, do things to protect the beauty of the place with people coming in and developing um, because they loved it so much, but we want to make sure that we, uh, we keep the things we love. One of the immediate needs was a new jail. The top floors of the courthouse housed the jail just as it had since the 1920s. Needless to say, that was not acceptable for a growing population. Uh, one of the things that happened sort of thereafter is the referendum on the Justice Center, which was really a big disappointment for us because it failed. And uh, everyone knows the condition of the jail was deplorable. <clears throat> and of course then uh, we had to face uh, the Department of Corrections, who at that time set the jail standards. And I'll never forget the day uh, that the DOC sent one of its representatives to Raleigh to meet with Gene Rainey, who was then chairman, saying that you're going to build a new jail here in Buckingham County. And if you don't build a new jail, then we're taking your prisoners to Mecklenburg County and you're going to pay us for their upkeep. So uh, even though the Justice Center and the jail had been defeated, we went ahead and uh, allocated the money and uh, uh, set up the financing and built a new jail. And uh, that was something that was significant for the county. The jail at that time consisted of uh, the top floors of the present courthouse. And the problem there was that if you ever had a, ever had a fire in that courthouse, 
you lose all the prisoners. And the result would be that this county would go bankrupt having to pay for, for the lawsuits that would come out of that. We uh, had a uh, bond referendum to build the jail and it failed. It failed. We had to do a cop, a, well, what is it called? It, it's anyway where the county does the funding. As a result, uh, the new jail was, was important, that not only because of the safety of the, of the prisoners, but it was getting bigger and bigger, and since then, the county has built an annex to it. It's gotten so big. The commissioners that built that first jail spent the night there. I've been in jail one night. One night. Uh, my fellow commissioners played cards all night. I, I went ahead and went to sleep. But anyway, we spent a night there. I was visited by the, uh, a representative of the governor from the uh, Department of Justice. And he let it be known that unless we had a jail to replace the awful system at the top of the courthouse, that we would be forced to send our prisoners to Charlotte and bust them back and forth between the court dates. Such a system would have cost an awful lot of money. When he left, I was sort of splattered on the wall and uh, by all the things that he was saying. So uh, that's when we went ahead and funded the jail ourselves. Building a new jail, or what we came to refer to as the detention center, then renovating the old jail space and adding the life safety tower, and eventually the completion of the Justice Center as we see it today was a long process and the right thing to do, right? But not easy or popular. And one of the things that we dealt with was what to do with the county courthouse. Uh, there were three four floors, top three floors of the county courthouse were, that were unable to be used. They had been the jail. Uh, they weren't usable. Lots of folks wanted us to move county services out of Asheville. Let's go to River Ridge. Let's go to somewhere out of town where you have big parking spaces and people can, can come out of town to get their services. And we said, no ma'am, no sir. We're going to keep services downtown. So we as a group made the decision, and, and I was very, very emphatic about this, that we keep county services downtown. We maintain our historic county courthouse. We built a life safety tower behind the courthouse so we could access those top floors. We build a courts building so, so any, anything to do with the courts could, be, could take place down there. Uh, you know, we worked on improvements to the courthouse. We expanded the jail at the time. We spent about $25 million building the annex to the jail, but you know, the, we were never able to um, make the improvements to the courthouse and the county's gone ahead and done that, something that probably needed to be done, but was a major so 80 plus million dollar project. I saw Judge Lewis trying really, really hard to build a new courthouse. Mm -hmm. And of course that was voted down by it the was. people. It was. And I, I came over here every day and I saw how much the need was for a new courthouse. Yeah. I mean, it was great in the twenties and it was probably great for many decades after that, yeah. but in the times we're living, you needed a new courthouse. Yeah. And so to have an opportunity to help be part of building the new courthouse was just an, a, a wonderful experience for me. But even that took 20 years. Yeah. It wasn't something that you just came and said, okay, gosh, I'm a commissioner now, let's build a courthouse. Right, right. You know? well, well, that's that's the thing a lot of people don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, no matter what ideas you have, no matter what your dreams and hopes are, yeah. you have to have a majority of the board to support you. You, you quickly uh, find out that Nothing positive is accomplished uh, as a county commissioner without others helping you. You know, at that time we had a five member board, so Commissioner Stanley that I served with always said you gotta count to three. So anything good that happened, it took a majority of our board supporting that. 
Looking back, what would we have done without those changes today? Our leaders face more unpopular decisions, including the need to site a new landfill. Our old landfill was being pretty well used up and uh, we had to find another landfill. And nobody, nobody wanted a, a landfill in their backyard and you can't blame them for that. Uh, another big controversial thing, and I'm sure I've still got folks out there that are uh, upset with me 20 years later, 25 years later, was the siding and the building of a landfill. Uh, that was a necessity that we had to do. Uh, and we went through some uh, rather uh, robust discussions on that. Uh, even had meetings at the Civic Center and uh, so forth. But narrowed it down, passed it, and uh, it turned out to be uh, that we have uh, one of the better landfills on the North American continent. Uh, we now have uh, uh, made some additional improvements. We, when it was first built, we were hoping to get 30 years out of it. Uh, but now with the improvements that uh, the commissioners have made and approved uh, with the leachate system and, and various other topics, selling the gas off and so forth, that we've significantly extended the life of that landfill. And I'm glad that we did that. And uh, it did uproot some folks, uh, but they were well paid for their uh, properties. We paid market value for everything that we did. One of the most difficult decisions you have to make, <clears throat> you have to make those about every 20 something years when everything came up for us twice, is it the site in the landfill, you know, where you put things that people don't want. I mean, they need, they got to have it, but they don't want it. That's the, the, the NIMBY thing, not in my backyard. And we fought that battle <laughs> all over the county. <laughs> and uh, talking to people about where we may or may not, may not place a landfill. And <clears throat> that, I think, fighting the landfill was, was a great accomplishment, because that was, that was tough. Determining where to put the landfill and then meeting with residents to explain the need was a long and painful process that took years to complete. However, the end result is a state-of-the-art landfill that generates electricity to 1,100 homes and will hopefully never have to be replaced. But the hard decisions were not over. Our county was growing fast and land use planning, zoning, were quickly becoming something the leaders had to consider. I guess if I had to take one vote over uh, again, it would have been not to allow uh, the county government, I mean the county residents to vote on whether they wanted zoning or not. That sounds harsh, uh, and I don't mean it in that respect at all, but I do say that was the responsibility of the Board of Commissioners whether it was popular or not popular, if that was best for the county, then we should have done that uh, and taken that action without the referendum. Now Buncombe County has zoning, which is good, and I think there'd be very, very few people who said it was not beneficial. One of the big changes that came was the zoning, or, or that was one of the big issues, and I remember even talking with my students about that. Um, and, and there were some disappointments there. There was a point at which we felt like we were going to get that passed and then it didn't. But I remember um, going to going on a trip with some friends of mine and we got down to South Carolina and somebody had this uh, tabloid type thing that, that something, I think I can't remember who it even was. It was Kiefer, Dent and Sobel, I think, you know, had these pictures of us as awful zoning people. And, you know, it was, it was sort of funny. But, uh, you know, that was something that, that I always felt like was important. And it was a difficult thing to do because it's a change. We're, we're a mountain culture. We're kind of independent. We don't want people telling us what to do mm -hmm. at all, particularly with our land. And, and that's part of the beauty of who we are. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, as we grow and develop, neighbors have different ideas about what is acceptable and what is uh, uh, appropriate development. And so we, we've, we've had a clash of cultures, we've had a clash of development, mm -hmm. and so we really needed to have it. Mm -hmm. uh, we started it, we made some mistakes legally, mm -hmm. we had a referendum on it that was soundly defeated, yeah. and then I think we just said, we just need to do this. Just gotta do it. 
Yeah. And, and from zoning, we, did, we were able to do things through the zoning plan, such as steep slope, uh, ridge top laws, erosion laws, cell tower laws, Blue Ridge Parkway overlays, a lot of things that I think were much less controversial, but it was really hard. As you've heard, change and progress are often hard fought battles. We can't forget that in addition to these really big issues, there were dilapidated schools that needed repair and renovation, and the county would go on to build 11 new facilities during these years. There were junkyards and cell towers that needed to be regulated, and a public safety training facility was completed. When I first went in, uh, we were, Buckle County had the distinction of being, their school system, of being part of the Dirty Dozen nationwide. And we started then passing various bonds uh, that had to do with sales tax to do the funding and building up. And I think in, uh, over the, well, the present board continues to do that, that uh, our school construction program is one of the best in the nation. Our schools were the, we were the, I think we were, uh, were the second from the bottom on funding schools. And of course we, we, we fix that. We, we brought that up. We got, we got that, uh, we funded our schools. All parents, grandparents, parents, and even people that don't even have kids in school are for that, but they don't want to pay taxes. <laughs> None of us want to pay taxes. And uh, that, that well, anytime you're, you're moving somebody else's money, they're gonna, you're gonna get, you're gonna get their attention. <laughs> you start messing with somebody else's money. <clears throat> and I think that, that they, they felt like, you know, that the, the schools needed to be done. And they didn't fuss that much. They, we, it, it, went, it went pretty well, very well. I just knew I wanted to find schools. That was all I knew. I was, I was a single issue coming in, I want to help schools. So obviously uh, one of the first things I wanted to find out was, you know, how do we how do we increase our funding in schools? Well, teachers were vastly underpaid. Uh, they still are, but we went through a systematic long-term process of raising the teacher supplement. Um, we've increased funding to schools dramatically during that 16-year period, and I know since, since that time they've continued on that path, but brought technology into schools. We've updated schools. We've built new schools. I mean, we've, I think we've totally changed the makeup of the infrastructure of Buncombe County in those in that early time to now. We needed new libraries, we needed some new schools, right. and um, I had no idea the interest rates would go to 3%, <laughs> but they did. Yeah. And so that, that, had us, that gave us even more of an opportunity to build and catch up with things we should have done a long time ago. I had, as the president of AB Tech, been trying to establish a public service training facility for fire, and law and EMS so that they could have the appropriate training that they needed uh, and the kind of facilities that they needed for that, that, for that training. Uh, I had looked at several spots in Buncombe County uh, over the years and, and there was a couple that we tried to, uh, uh, to, to purchase or establish. Um, and then when I became a county commissioner, uh, and working with the county manager and the other commissioners uh, use the old landfill at uh, Woodford and uh, you can go today and look at one of the finest training facilities uh, in the country. Remember those projects Chairman Rainey told the board they needed to tackle back in 1989? A new jail, landfill, schools. It took more than 30 years to complete them all, but they did. What he did not foresee was the coming of cell phones, personal computers, and digital information. During those years, the commissioners' meetings began airing on television and on the web, allowing for more transparency and public involvement. I can remember um, technology being totally different. <laughs> yeah. we, we were debating whether to televise. Uh, you used to give us notebooks <laughs> yeah, and sure. copies, and there was always a feeling that we got a few more sheets than the public did. Yeah. And so I think it was a real 
good thing for transparency in government when we said, we're going to post it online and you're going to get to see the exact same thing the commissioners. There's no secret documents in there. How'd they do it? They kept their focus on what the county needed to keep growing healthier, safer, smarter. They realized it was not about them and they were willing to make an investment of time and energy to plant the seeds in a garden they might never see grow that could result in something they would never see finished. That is public service. We now have the problem solved that I'm very happy about. A new landfill, which is existing. Not only a new jail, but a jail annex to it. That's important. All of these things show improvements, and I'm sure the Preston County Commissioner group is good. Of course, uh, you would hope that when these controversial items come up that everybody has done their homework. Uh, I mean, you can't be a county commissioner and just go in there on the first and third Tuesdays and do your job. Uh, that's the easy part. The hard part is the, the daily phone calls and this kind of stuff and helping folks out that have really got a little problem and don't know where to go. I will say that when these controversial items come up and we had our share, the jail was one, of course the landfill was one, uh, and there's, uh, zoning was certainly one. At the end of the day, you got to live with yourself and you've got to convince Tom Sobel or Sam Jones or Mary Smith, whoever the commissioners are, that when I look in the mirror, I know I did the right thing. And I always tried to have the philosophy that if I ever got up in the morning and looked in that mirror and I didn't like who I saw, that it was time for me to get out. Uh, I always taught the election process and that's part of what got me into this was just to show my students that uh, politicians, people who run for office are just normal everyday people who feel like they have something to offer their communities. The thing that I noticed most about Buncombe County, and I loved being a commissioner, it, it, was, it was great fun, I loved meeting the people and working with the staff, and the thing that I feel strongest about is how well different organizations in Buncombe County worked together, particularly the health organizations at the time. It, it seemed like a period when people were just uh, coming together and everybody was on the same page. And maybe that's my Pollyanna attitude, but uh, you know, that didn't happen in other counties. I did some traveling at the time and Buncombe County is still that way. I think Buncombe County is still a very special place where people care about the issues and they work together. Uh, for the betterment of everybody. You know, I feel like I served in a golden age of Buncombe County and it was uh, very productive. You know, whoever's elected county commissioner, uh, I think everyone has, you know, what's the best interest at the heart of their community and wants to see progress. Sometimes there's a difference in opinion on the way to, ways to do that, but, um, you know, I, I serve with really good people and, uh, like I said, we would disagree on occasion, but, um, they were uh, good, uh, dedicated public servants and it was an honor to, to be with them. I think what does come to mind is the um, care and the feeling that we as a group of commissioners had for each other and how we approached things as a group. Um, I think of serving with Bill Stanley. Bill had been my, I, I taught at Asheville High School and Bill was my principal. And uh, I remember being in awe of what he had done with Asheville High School and how, how much I enjoyed working with him there. And then to serve with him on a county commission level was just wonderful. I think of serving with Ray Bailey, who was uh, president of AB Tech, president emeritus now of AB Tech. And uh, having worked with him as a member of the board of AB Tech. I think of um, David Young when I first was county commissioner. I knew David since he was just a pup. We went to, to um, Central Church together. I mean, I've known David forever, knew his wife forever. I think that you look at the people that you worked with and the history that you bring together when you work as a group and all the, the different um, aspects of each person's life when they serve as a county commissioner. You blend that together, you blend that together, and you have a group of people who are so interested in Buncombe County as a whole. When I look back on my time, we have five commissioners, and you know, probably 
most people didn't know, but we were very close. I mean, I didn't know them coming in and they didn't know me, but uh, because we worked so closely together for such a long time, we became very close friends. So we were, we were friends with each other and there was very little animosity. So we didn't argue, we may have argued amongst ourselves on an issue, but we walked out, we said, okay, done, vote's over, let's be friends. You know, what are you doing this weekend? What's, what's going on? You know, we, we became friends and it didn't affect how we, how we uh, governed the county. My, my philosophy in running uh, uh, AB Tech as a college was treat people like you want to be treated. And uh, I tried to carry that over into being a, a county commissioner. One thing you have to do is you need to be transparent. And that was a good lesson and listen to people and then try to treat people like you want to be treated. I think it's very important that you listen to the citizens, sit and absorb that, and make that a part of the daily decisions that you make as a commissioner. Citizens are what it's all about. Uh, you know, if you drive from Barnersville to, to Sandy Mush to Broad River, you can drive several hundred miles and never leave Buncombe County. And uh, we have a diverse community, uh, and you know the effort to try to meet the needs of all of our citizens is uh, is challenging. But you know I still contend, and unfortunately politics today is even probably more divisive. But you know what unites us is always greater than what divides us. We've come a long way since 1792. 225 years later, our population is at 278,000. I wonder if Mr. Vance and Mr. Davidson could have envisioned the county we have today. Governing has never been easy. And as we look forward to the future, I hope this look back reminds you, as it does me, that we are a pioneering, industrious, and innovative county. There is strength in our diversity, and it gives me hope that the best is yet to come. <laughs>